In this video, we'll be discussing three of Samyang's AF series full frame lenses, and they're the biggest and the fastest of the series, and that is the 35, the 50, and the 85mm f1.4. We're going to break these down for you, giving you everything that you need to know, including some examples that I've personally taken with these lenses, my opinion, my pros and cons, and whether I think you should consider them. Let's go! Welcome back, and yes, we are chatting about Samyang's AF series full frame lenses today, specifically the 85, the 50, and the 35mm f1.4. And this is not going to be an in depth review of any of these lenses, more like a brief overview and to kind of give you an idea whether you should be considering this line at all. So, if you're interested in an in depth review of any of these lenses, make sure you check out my reviews on each. Also, right before we jump in, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, my name is Stefan Malik, and I do a lot of photography and filmmaking news reviews and tutorials. So if you do enjoy this content and you like this video, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Let's dive in. Let's start off with the 35 1.4, the widest of the three lenses and a very versatile focal length. The 35 can be used for pretty much everything from portrait photography to landscapes and everything in between. Now despite being a 1.4, Samyang's done a great job to keep this thing reasonable in size and weight. And the build quality of this lens is actually better than expected for the price. Although these lenses might look similar, they do vary in performance quite a bit. Here's some basic specs on the 35 for you, and let's check out a few examples of some pictures that I've taken with it. Overall, this lens has a lot going for it. Incredible value and decent performance across the board. Like any lens, it's not perfect, and here are my personal pros and cons for the 35 1.4. And rating this lens as a whole, I gave it 4 solid stars. One of these three lenses is not like the others, and unfortunately, it's the 50mm f1.4. My experience with this lens was nothing short of frustrating, and although it looks like the 35 and 85, it definitely doesn't perform like them. Right out of the box, I experienced catastrophic autofocus failure, and a complete lack of consistency in both photo and video. In its defense, it is the oldest of the three lenses, but this type of performance is just completely unacceptable. I wish I could say it was just a bad copy, but if you look online, I'm definitely not the only one with these issues when it comes to this lens. It's really a shame because I love shooting with the 50mm focal length, and you're just not going to find a 51.4 in this price range. To be honest, my review of this lens was the shortest that I've ever done, and I'd rather just save you the time and tell you not to buy this lens. So here's my personal pros and cons, as well as my rating scale, and all I have to say is just never think about this thing again. And last, but definitely not least, the 85mm f1.4. And this just happens to be one of my favorite E-mount lenses, period. Here's some basic specs on this lens to get you going. So what do I love about this lens so much? Well, for starters, its size and weight for 1.4 is fantastic and actually best in class. It's completely reasonable and I find myself being able to take it most places without being a burden. Its build quality, like the 35 and the 50, is quite decent. And one great improvement of the 85 is weather sealing, giving you a nice little rubber gasket for peace of mind. One thing to note if you are a video shooter, 
This lens is reported to suffer with some autofocus issues when it comes to video, especially with early on firmware, so absolutely make sure your firmware is up to date, which unfortunately you'll need the dock to do. And even with the newest firmware, there are some incidents where you just get a bad copy. Unfortunately, Samyang and Rockinon's quality control isn't the best out there, and I can personally vouch for that as it did take me a few copies to get a perfectly working lens with great image quality. So the lens as a whole, I really like it and enjoy using it, and here's some examples from a wedding that I attended. And like I said about video, there are some people that are reporting some issues, but I use this thing quite often for video and it works great for me. And here's a few examples of that from that same wedding. So there you go, and ultimately you can be the judge from all that footage and whatnot, but here's my personal pros and cons of this lens. It's a great performing lens with tons of value in a great little package, and I would definitely recommend it to anybody looking for an 85. And as a whole, I give this lens 4.5 stars. So now that you've seen these lenses individually, let's jump in and do a quick comparison of them. So you have an idea of my thoughts on these lenses now. The 50 for the most part completely avoid and don't buy it, but we will look at it in this case anyways. As far as size is concerned for all three of these lenses, they are a decent size and weight for a 1.4, so in that regard, they all get checks. Next when it comes to build, they do look and feel very similar, but there are some differences. The 85 of course being newer, having better components, and being weather sealed is going to take the cake. Performance on the 85 and 35 are fantastic, with the exception of autofocus and video that we talked about in some cases. And again, the 50 is completely unusable. Finally, when it comes to value, Samyang or Rockinon do produce some lenses with incredible value. I would absolutely recommend the 85 and the 35 f1.4 to you, and you'll have to choose a focal length depending on your needs. But they're definitely both great options if you're on a budget, or just want a fast prime and don't want to spend a million bucks. You can typically find the 85 for about 600 US dollars and the 35 comes in a little bit less now at about 479. Incredible when you consider that competing 1.4s are going for two, even three times the price. Okay, so there's a brief overview of these three lenses, the Samyang or Rockinon AF Series 35, 50, and 85 millimeter f1.4. None of these lenses are really made for video, so if it's video you're concerned with and you're shooting a lot of that, consider maybe looking at the 2.8 variety, the 24 or the 35 2.8, or some of the native Sony lenses that might serve you a little bit better. But if you shoot mostly stills with a little bit of video, these lenses are gonna be fantastic for you. 
With these lenses, or pretty much any lens, I do recommend getting an extended warranty if it's possible. If you're thinking about buying one of these lenses, if you want to pick one of them up, check out the affiliate links in the description for you that'll take you to where you need to go to buy them. And like always guys, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you in the next one.